guys welcome back to my channel today as you can see I'm jumping back in with a bit of a quick catch up I know I missed at least one favorites video so I wanted to come on and do a things that I'm loving at the moment then also just a quick snippet of things to come before we jump in there's not much to catch you guys up on but I will have a brief chit chat in the last month, I took a break from Instagram as well, not because I feel like I have an unhealthy relationship with social media, because actually that's not the case. I took a step away, and when I say I took a step away, I had a week where I did watch YouTube videos, but I I think it was over a week actually. I deleted apps from my phone, which was lovely, because I just stopped carrying my phone around with me, and my phone's so heavy. <laughs> I don't know who they're making these bricks for, but I really miss having little lightweight phones. But anyway, it's one of those things. I like to be very active in the community in learning what other people have got going on, whether it's good, what struggles they've got, you know, supporting people, hearing people, learning about the impacts all over the world. I take that very, very seriously. I realise that emotionally, I have tending to do to myself at the moment because, you know, without going too heavy for people, when you wake up and you're in pain every day, it is a very, very difficult thing to live with. Whenever I mention how I'm feeling with it, I genuinely feel very narcissistic and very uncomfortable, which I know isn't the case. And I just feel like recently I'd been very out of balance with that in that, when I talk about myself or even when I briefly mention it in the videos um, on the monthly favourites, for example, when we catch up and people watch them and they send their loving, supportive comments, I then feel like I shouldn't have said anything. So that's kind of where I am. I don't want to go into a big ramble about it at the moment. One of the other things is that when I do discuss it, Often it's seen as an invitation for others to give me advice or, I don't know, sort of then it's seen as a window into what's going on behind closed doors. It's a very difficult one, but basically it's a very vulnerable place to be. And what I'd said on Instagram was when I share, I would respectfully ask that unless I'm asking for advice that I wasn't automatically given it and for people to hold the assumption that when some of us share these things that we're, we're sharing them from a place of knowing so we have a great understanding within our pain you know knowing that or I guess trusting that we have tried as many things as possible. And if we haven't, then that we will ask other people for their insights. That may seem really ungrateful in the grand scheme of things. I appreciate not everyone's going to feel that way. Um, I remember actually a while ago, Katie Flowers did a really, really fantastic video. And unfortunately, I don't know what video it is to be able to direct you to. But she was talking about unsolicited advice and how sometimes it can do more for the person giving it than the person that's receiving it. And so I find it really difficult to say that on here, but I think that it's an important boundary that I don't set other people up to fail either. So that when I share that I'm honouring how I feel about when I share and if I ask for advice, then I'm welcome in it. And if I don't, then I don't. Putting it out there now, it feels very self-involved. But I am going to continue to push through that feeling because I, you know, I work with people for a living. I am continuously encouraging people to be able to find the balance between being there for others and being there for themselves. And I guess it's difficult because on a YouTube platform or an Instagram platform, sometimes it can feel very one sided because there's not people right there and then with you having the discussion and you hear yourself back editing or posting and it's like, oh, I've spoken about myself so much. But but yeah, I'm rambling and I think it's time to get into some of the fun stuff. But if anyone else is experiencing that, then 
just know that you know you're not alone and it's just a very very strange place to be especially as someone who works with people and facilitates them on their healing journey it's important that we focus on our own but sometimes because we're used to doing it with others it feels like the scales have flipped too much at least that's my experience but on to the stuff four decks that are totally rocking my world at the moment the first one is the mesquite tarot and i'm sorry it is out of print everyone i managed to nab a copy just before i think it was that it went out of print and i am really loving it i do have a tendency towards some of the more spacious feeling decks anyway and i wanted something that was people but very very different i really don't know how to articulate it at the moment but there's certainly a versatility that this particular deck offers that maybe the rider weight smith clones and things like that don't and i love the court renames because they're not gendered and also i think that it's still encourages people to have an understanding of the energy of the courts the color palette is life itself and the size is perfect for my tiny hands so all in all i'm really loving this the book that comes with it is short but almost poetic and the words that they use are still quite juicy there's a really lovely selection of descriptive words and metaphor and energy throughout the book that whilst as i say it's only a short book for each description it really does feel like it delves into what's going on one heads up if anyone is getting this deck or has this deck don't leave your deck on top of the bag <laughs> i've been drying this deck out since this happened i left it on top of the bag and it wasn't outside but it was a warm-ish day and the bag stuck to the back of my deck it's only one card and it's only the back i'm hoping that it will not be sticky and i can continue to put my lovely knower of cups back into the deck next up i have been besotted with the compendium of constellations deck who knew <laughs> mrs knows fuck all about astrology and yeah just very very basic knowledge of my own astrological stuff not really useful for anyone else's and i decided to get this deck i think that i told you guys before that i had decided to explore all of the constellations and find out why the creator had chosen the keywords they had I have finished my book I, there will be other stuff in this book it is literally just a really really scruffy notebook <laughs> it's the most unattractive thing ever apart from the cover something just opened in me when i was doing the research i am into the greek mythology at the moment some of it's linked to myth from various um cultures and traditions over the world a much smaller amount but there are some and some of these are kind of debated as to what myth they're attached to so when i was reading up on it because the book's only for me i just went with the one that i felt resonated with the word that claire had chosen so yes all of a sudden this big flavour for this stuff has come in so not only am I loving using this deck behind the scenes but I've also added a it is very modern and new I don't know if it's any good at all to be honest I've read very mixed reviews but I've added an astrology book to my Amazon wish list, <laughs> which I never thought would happen this deck has kind of opened that little avenue of interest in a fun way as opposed to my usual very academic die hard study seriousness that goes on this is more a fun thing to do one of the things that did really make me laugh and my partner before i move on is 
My partner would come home and say, how's, how's the book going? Yeah, I've learned this myth and this myth and this myth. And then what happened was they took them and they put them in the stars. And it's kind of been my little catchphrase for a, a few weeks because <laughs> it literally, if it was attached to your Greek myths, uh, they took them and put them in the stars. So yeah, the final two decks, and this will be a lot quicker are the Brady Tarot. Yes, I have the Brady Tarot and I am besotted with it. Emmy Brady just, well, knocks my socks off. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'm doing something with it at the moment and I will come on and talk about it more at a different point, especially because I had really powerful feelings about the deck and I'm really loving using it. The book was, I had a different response to the book and I feel like that would be a worthwhile discussion at another point as well. I've been using it in conjunction with my Wild Unknown, but I managed to score myself a very affordable first edition <laughs> for those who don't know the wild unknown tarot had swiftly become another of my soul decks i don't know if it's kind of weird to people that i'm using it as opposed to just squirreling it away i actually prefer the cardstock on my second indie edition and would rather wear this one out first. <laughs> I know, I'm strange, but I always wanted a first edition and I am so freaking psyched. So what I did was I decided that I would journal about the two of them together, which is coming up next. Here's the journal, but before I jump in, I now want to tell you one of the youtubers slash instagrammers who i have been loving recently and that is nightshade tarot nightshade tarot is the creator of 78 pieces of tarot which is an ongoing project really discussion hashtag at the moment they are going through the mariel tarot so you may have seen this come up quite a lot you may be in their facebook group I'm not currently in the Facebook group just because I'm not doing the Mariel one. However, this is heavily inspired by Nightshade Tarot. And so I want to give her the, the support that she deserves because between her and a few other really creative people that I have um, in, my, in my Instagram and YouTube community, people such as Nonqua, which is Joanna and also a lovely friend of mine who is called Willow Moon. I think it's Willow Moon Tarot on Instagram, but I don't know if she would want her, her real name shared. They're journaling as well, amongst others, I'm sure I'm forgetting people, has really inspired me. And so I started my own 78 pieces with two decks because... I had originally tried to do it with my Lioness Oracle Tarot and got bored, <laughs> not gonna lie. Doing this journal slowly has completely opened that up for me. I have made many mistakes and have had to creatively fix them or work around them, which is great fun. And I guess the massive difference for me is that I'm not working through a card a day because I would just set myself up to fail and it would not happen. That being said, here's my journal. This is a really old journal actually from years ago that I had laying around and decided to use. This will only fit the majors in and then I'll have to get another one for the minors. So you can see I've printed off both of one of each cards just to represent them clearly and I've not really followed any particular format. However, I have been guided by the prompts that the lovely Nightshade Tarot has put in the 78 pieces. I am not much further than the High Priestess as you can see but it's just been a freaking awesome project. People have been really supportive about it on Instagram as well, which has been lovely. But one of the things that people had said was, oh, it's so pretty. I wish my journal looked like that. 
Well, you just saw one of my other journals, the Compendium of Constellations, and it's ugly, right? <laughs> that's because that's how I journal. If I journaled like this all the time, basically I would never journal because it takes time. I can't just very quickly get everything in my brain or emotions out onto a bit of paper. I do make a lot of spelling mistakes and things like that. Yeah, I'm just a, I'm a messy journaler. That's the only way notes get taken down for whatever they're for is in a mess. So firstly, when you're seeing these gorgeous journals, it doesn't matter how you journal as long as it works for you. This is as much an art project as it is an exploration of the two decks. And another thing I would say is, yeah, totally, if you're doing a journal, get creative with your mistakes. This star is covering up another F because I wasn't paying attention. These are... One of these was a spelling mistake, so I cut out a bit of paper, popped it over the top and then decided to do a few more. There's no right or wrong way, but it's been super fun. It's the, the thing that has helped me come back to a place of peace whilst I have been processing some really heavy emotions and just grieving a bit again, really, to be honest, um, ab about health and stuff. And this has been freaking awesome. So, oh, so thankful that Tamara created this. And just really quickly as an add-on, some of the other things that I have been loving are my clear stamps. Um, I've watercolored those and you can see I was just playing around on a bit of paper, but I love stamps, you guys. I love them. I feel like a, uh, I'm really embracing the inner child in me at the moment with the creativity and the watercolour is really helping actually because it kind of does what it wants to a degree and that perfectionism then has to be released for want of a better term. You have to know that to a certain extent you don't have control over exactly how it's going to come out, but that's fine. I don't know what to say other than I love stickers, you guys. I love them. This is from Rat Lady Art. He's a great... Um, honestly, I am just a sticker, washi tape, um, watercolour, collaging, stamping nerd at the moment. Next, I'd like to shout out two very different but very awesome podcasts. The first one is going to sound really biased because I love these two women so much. They are good friends of mine, but of course I'm going to fucking shout out my friends. And you might think I'm biased, but honestly, they're amazing. So I've got the Wildly Tarot podcast. And that is by the lovely Holly and Esther. And in the bottom below, I will put Holly and Esther's podcast link. And I'll also put their Instagram links. They make me laugh every time they bring out a podcast. And it has infused me with a sense of laughter and and happiness and joy at times when maybe I haven't been able to access it otherwise and I felt very blocked or withdrawn from those experiences and it really is just like sitting and listening to two friends have a chat about tarot they discuss decks they discuss books um they answer pe people's questions that are their listeners they don't scrimp out on talking about the real stuff, but also they are just bundles of fun and I love them so much. Honestly, the podcast is one of those ones where if you're walking down the road and they say something funny, there's no way that you're not going to crack up laughing and look like a lunatic, but that's fine because it just is feel good. <laughs> I am really thankful for it and... I've slowly been catching up on all of it, back listening, and now each, I think it's Thursday that it comes out, I'm listening to them straight away because 
it's just yeah I'm, I'm hooked the other one is very different it's called tarot for the wild soul and that's created by lindsay mack whom i'm sure loads of you already know who she is but i didn't because i like to live under a rock occasionally apparently i just have found lindsay mack's view of the tarot to be very open and a kind of replenishing I guess in the way that I come to tarot and whilst we still probably come at it in different ways actually a lot of it feels like it speaks to each other and can work with each other and Lindsay obviously has so much experience and knowledge and things like that that she shares whilst remaining I feel very humble um talks to lots of important factors across the board is very open to discuss those hot topics those difficult things but is very loving i guess in the way that i find her presentation and there's been some times when i've been feeling emotional and i've listened to her monthly medicines and just felt really seen and heard although I'm just listening to a podcast and I think that what's lovely about it is when I very first came into social media tarot land I put people up on pedestals and I don't feel like I do that anymore I'm able to recognize everyone's potential for growth and our potential for differences and that that's okay and that the way I do things isn't necessarily wrong just because it's different but also still love them and be totally into what they're talking about and yeah I've just I've really been enjoying it I'm a little bit gutted actually that I found her after her recent tarot school thing but there's always potential for that another year and yeah those two podcasts seriously I highly recommend them if you've got any great podcasts, please let me know in the comments. I've only got about eight so far and they're not all tarot. I've got like Trevor Noah. He rocks. I love Trevor Noah. I have um, another one that is very climate and environmental and politically based. So let me know about podcasts you're loving, guys. And if you want to have more of a podcast chat, maybe we'll do that another time. This video is going to be incredibly long if I don't just start busting the last few things out quickly. So that is what I'm going to do. Two books that I have been diving into in recent months. The Book of English Magic. I managed to get this for an absolute steal second hand. Funny enough, I bought it just before I saw a video where... I think it was Kellyanne Maddox recommended this book. I don't know if it was a new video or whether I was back watching her because... I do that <laughs> this is a new book because it's new out and i really wanted to support the creator because i i value her work so much it's full like this is what i love to actually get to to dive into her words and experience the emotions with her it's that kind of raw but healing and necessary cathartic writing i feel that the creator does and the creator who is here is someone who created an animal deck but because they're i think canadian i haven't been able to get the the deck and it was really nice just to support them and get their book instead the only other thing that i really want to shout love for before i discuss things to come is my fitbit <laughs> I know that's strange and probably even more so knowing that someone who has chronic pain and mobility difficulties and stuff like that not mobility difficulties in that I can't walk in in terms of pain and not being able to do any exercises and stuff that they would have a Fitbit but I love this Fitbit it is awesome it's one of the best things that I did because I sat down and thought, okay, is it going to be one of those things where I feel like I've never done enough? 
or is it going to actually show me that there are ways to still move and things in which are very different to how I used to be but still allow me to recognise what I'm doing. That's certainly the purpose that it has served for me. My particular model you can swim in and it helps and it takes a lot of the pain and the inflammatory stuff and the pressure off so that's a bonus. Many of you will know that I can't sit down for long periods of time so I'm on my feet a lot which means it's good to walk and just being able to press the yoga and it register what light yoga I'm doing, it's fab. And I have never worn a watch. I'm not a watch person. So the fact that I've been wearing a Fitbit for probably just over a year now, I think. Yeah, I love it. It's really good fun. And now let's finish up with things to come. I wanted to show you the last little bit of documentation that I had done on the goslins. Some of them are pretty much full grown geese now and they are beautiful and it's been fun to visit them. They left me some more feathers and you can never have too many feathers. <laughs> of course you've got to know if you're allowed to take the feathers or not, just to put that out there. Um, it's been lovely. Again, that's one of my peaceful places. It's one of my meditative places. It's one where I do my craft. I take my tarot. I love being around the pond and I'd like to show you guys some more of it. I will be doing a few more podcast type videos just because I want to tackle some more topics and discussions and a lot of the time, those type of discussions, the person simply sitting in front of the camera talking for 20 minutes, half an hour. And so I appreciate I'm not doing that and you can't see me, but I don't want to not do those because there are just certain things that I might want to chat about and stop myself from doing. Some of those will be animal medicine. I have a lot more animal medicine stuff to bring to the table and discuss. Just personal experiences, what I've been working with recently and how that's been for me, my particular experience with them this time around. There's been a few really fun VRs recently. One of them that I can remember off the top of my head is Tarot Happiness by Strength Reversed. Definitely, definitely doing that. I have already started putting quick prompts to my answers. I want to discuss my tarot journal as well. That was requested and I'm happy to do so. And I want to sprinkle in a few deck reviews as well because I still enjoy doing that and I still plan to do that. I look forward to hearing from you guys, watching your videos I do encourage people to comment. I always make time for comments, even if I'm a week late, I will come back and chat with you because that's why I'm on social media. I really wouldn't bother without the engagement. Hopefully I will get to know some of you more who are newer to the channel. And aside from that, I will end on, I have been loving Billie Eilish. I appreciate that she's probably her demographic isn't me because I'm too old, <laughs> but I'm liking the dark melodies and yeah, just interesting songs that have been created like Bury a Friend, Ocean Eyes, Hostage. Some of the videos are really artistic as well, which has been fun to watch. I don't generally watch music videos anymore and I haven't probably since I was a teenager, but I have watched a few of hers. I like horror, so if you like horror, Bury a Friend's kind of interesting to watch. Other than that, I will catch you guys soon. Bye for now.